So let's say that we want to apply a small border around each of our navigational elements here. Now a quick and easy way to do this would be if I select the grid 2 and say I want to add a new CSS rule. I don't have to be real specific here. I just say, hey, you know what? If I am a grid 2 class and I'm in a parent element that has a nav class, this rule will apply. You can say OK. Then I'll go under border. I'm going to select a really simple, just a solid one pixel border and give it a dark gray color. Now if I say OK, you'll notice that my last element here all of a sudden pushed itself down to a new row. This is because while the grid underscore 2 defined a width, the border actually adds that width and no longer fits all six elements into my 960 pixels. Now it added one pixel width to each side for a total of six times, but it wouldn't matter if it did it once or if it did it a thousand times. It would not fit because the width of the border does not include the width of the element. So adding that extra little border threw off my layout scale. So here's a little trick on how to solve that problem. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this rule. Instead, I'm going to apply the width to my inner element, the anchor element. Now I could have used a span for this. I could have used uh, interior div, doesn't matter. I'm going to select my anchor tag. You can see it's highlighted here. Choose to create a new rule. I'm going to be a little bit less specific. I'm going to say, hey, if I'm an anchor tag, I'm just going to say, if I'm an anchor tag and my parent element has a class of nav on it, it could be any parent element, this is where I want the rules to apply to. I'm going to come over here to border, and I'm going to even make a bigger border. I'm going to use a groove. Now, a groove, remember, needs a couple of pixels so you can actually see that it's grooved. So I'm going to say four pixels, and I'm going to choose kind of a medium gray like this. Say apply. You can see that all six columns are still visible. Now you might be saying, I'm cheating, because as you notice, the anchor tag is an inline element, so it's not taking the full width. Well, that's a real quick, easy way to fix that. I'm going to go to my block category, and my last element is the display attribute. I'm going to choose under display to make this a block element. So even though my anchor tag is normally inline, I can override it with my CSS. Say apply. And you'll notice how the border now takes up the full space of my width in my grid underscore 2. So it's taken up the full space available to it. Now I have something I can start to treat like a button. And it's going to be a large button anywhere in this area. It's going to be clickable. Now I can do some other things to make it look a little bit nicer. For example, you notice that the text is right up on my border here. So once again, under my block category, I might choose my text align to be center. And under my type category, I'm probably going to do some things like make a way to bold and make my text decoration none. Say apply. And now I can see it's a little bit bigger. Now we're starting to look a little bit more like navigation buttons. This is just the first couple of steps to apply these simple navigation styles. I'm going to say OK. And just to verify that it's still going to look the exact same way inside our browser, I'm going to switch real quickly to Live View. And you'll notice that we now have six buttons that all look the same way.